The 10-year-old protagonist becomes subjected to a human trafficking gang, where she witnesses horrible atrocities being committed, things she could never imagine in her entire life, something that would make her believe she's casted into the bottom of hell. Hi folks, I'm R, your narrator. Consider following me on Twitter, where you can send me video suggestions and communicate with me. This video will contain spoilers. With that in mind, let's begin. A 10-year-old girl, wearing her school bag, walks in the busy streets of a rainy, gloomy city of Mongolia, finding several missing children posters on the heavily graffiti-vandalized walls. Walking just a short distance, the horrible real-life issues people tend to ignore on a daily basis are portrayed in various ways. An air pollution poster is attached to a construction site fence, Poverty and homelessness, a scene with a child trying desperately to revive the seemingly lifeless body of their parent. Stray dogs exploring and sniffing in scraps to find any food to slightly fill their empty, ribs-exposed stomachs. And more homeless kids and missing child posters, while miserable-looking people are walking by with cars driving with a background of slum houses built on top of each other portraying how everyone is busy with their own problems. Soon after, the little girl comes across another poster called Lantun Dohio, which is a real-life non-profit organization combating human trafficking and protecting children from violence and other types of abuse, having a main office in Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia. A further poster depicts the city the girl is located in as Ulaanbaatar, illustrating how air pollution is a major factor in cardiovascular and respiratory diseases and deaths. The girl continuing her walk, seemingly heading back home, she becomes subjected to an unidentified person watching her from across the road. As she goes to the quieter and emptier part of the town, going down a set of steps, she becomes abducted by two people wearing identity-covering clothing, one being the person who was watching her from before. Sometime later, the girl wakes up and finds herself in a dark and dilapidated cell with dog cages lying around. Reading an engraved memo on the wall, seemingly written by a child, it mentions that two kids were taken from the front of their school, being promised a video game. In the cell, one of the children was taken to a different room, being promised that it's for a bath, with the other friend in the cell hearing his friend crying frantically. The cries soon come to an abrupt end, with the child hoping his friend is not harmed. More wall-engraved writings of children being lured into this dark and horrific place, being treated horribly, reveals that the perpetrators have been doing this for a long time, possibly the culprits of children who went missing, shown on the posters. Peeking through the door's window, she observes a person carefully watching several surveillance monitors when she finds a hole in the back wall, which she kicks with all of her power, creating a path to escape. Going through the dark tunnels of mine-like passage, she comes across a note mentioning that someone has gotten used to the taste of a certain meat, which he or she believes to be like beef, indicating that the writer possibly ate human meat or other types in order to survive. Soon the protagonist comes across a man who has parts of his brains exposed, being in his underwear in a poor state, having dried runny nose and mumbling unintelligible sounds as if he's been subjected to brain trauma and trapped here for a long time, eating what he gets his hands on just to survive. This man, despite looking threatening, is quite friendly, playing a traditional Mongolian game with the girl before opening the path for her. Exiting the tunnel, the protagonist comes across a large room with many cells, with an imprisoned boy instructing her to find the key to his cell. Sneaking past the guard, reading a newspaper article, the protagonist learns that this place used to be a mine which shut down a long time ago, a place that the child abductors took as a base of their operation. More newspaper articles reveal that the owner of the mine died under mysterious circumstances, having his head cut off, leading his wife to go insane and their child missing, causing the public belief it might have been due to something sinister, something like a curse. The girl manages to find the key to the cell and free the boy trapped in it, who work together in order to escape. Jumping through a chute, the kids reach the base of the mine, with several miserable men working hard labor, having their eyes pulled out, as if they cannot sense and see anymore. 
being busy just with the thought of surviving. Finding a note, the girl and the boy learn that the owner of the mine didn't pay his employees for several months, causing an outrage. Sneaking past the workers, the kids reach a man with a vicious guard dog, whom they can only bypass through making the dog lose its credibility to the owner. Unfortunately, it's soon revealed why the dog is so vicious. It's so badly treated and hurt by its owner that it's become wild and hostile. The dog is also depicted to suffer from hunger due to its ribs being exposed and abuse. Going to the next room, they witness a sleeping man in front of the TV with a note in the closet planning a riot, a riot that broke out leading to the mine closure several years ago. The people within the closed down mine are seemingly a group of human traffickers who live in horrid conditions together as a small gang community as they find living outside impossible being used to the conditions of the mine and their small community. Opening the ventilation duct's cover and crawling through it, they witness a man dressed up in surgery scrubs getting ready for an operation. Just as they crawl further, the boy gets taken by a guard, ending up in an operation room with two men harvesting his organs. The girl in horror, witnessing the savagery of their kidnappers, falls off the duct, screaming in disbelief. She sets on running as she notices the men slowly approaching her, when suddenly the world in her perspective transforms into a demonic, claustrophobic hell, with the men transformed into monsters, depicting how her fragile child mind couldn't comprehend and come to terms to the atrocities committed. The girl manages to outrun the men, where in a short moment of silence, she catches her breath, not believing what she just witnessed. Her mind slowly breaks down, depicted in the cracked glass pane on the screen, where she desperately tries to find a way to leave this godforsaken demonic entity-ridden place. Going deeper, the girl comes across the man with parts of his brain exposed yet again, with a portrait of a child showing him holding a trophy. After playing another traditional game, the man opens another path for the girl. She then enters a long, abandoned, seemingly well-hidden room with a family portrait, presumably having had belonged to the mine owner. Deeper down the path, the girl is startled by the vision of the boy who had his organs harvested earlier, running towards a direction as if this hallucination is guiding her somewhere. Following him, she reaches a large pile of child corpses with their organs removed, causing the girl's mind to become more fractured. Traversing further, she comes across the butchery room, where they grind up all kinds of meat, including human corpses, which they seemingly eat themselves or sell to public. Perceiving the butchers visually as the monsters they truly are, one of them gets notified of the girl's presence and hits her hard, rendering her unconscious. The girl wakes up in an insanitary room, restrained on a hospital bed. A camera is set up recording her, seemingly the gang selling footage of their victims suffering and passing to twisted and sick-minded buyers for more money. Just as one of the men is preparing to perform for the camera, the man with the exposed brain comes to her rescue and brutally murders the man behind the curtain. He opens her restraints when she gets off her bed and goes to witness him being shot and having his last breaths. He hands over a gun to her to protect herself, the only person who saw him as human and played some traditional games with him, when he quickly passes away, causing the girl to cry as he was truly innocent. Despite his looks, she never saw him as a monster, how she saw the other men. The girl subsequently finds a note on him, revealing the tragic past of this man. He was the son of the mine owner, who was violated by his typically drunken father on a regular basis in front of his mother. Taking advantage of the riot that broke out by the unpaid mine workers, the boy drugs his father's vodka, making him weaker, providing him the chance to slit his throat and cut his head off in front of his mother. Therefore, the person who murdered the mine owner was no other than his own son, whom he badly mistreated alongside the mine workers working in horrid conditions. Passing the numerous jars of organs, the girl encounters hostile, moving, rotting corpses, representing the crippling fear she sustained in the mine and the mutilated corpses she encountered. She climbs up through multiple boxes stacked on top of each other, while she's chased by grotesque, monstrous entities, 
finally managing to exit the mine and reach the surface. The surface is swarmed with storm, lightning and flying objects, making it hard for the girl to hold on. Not being able to cope with the horrible experience she just went through, her mind starts breaking down, taking her to a different world. Opening her eyes, becoming hollow just like the monstrous man she overran and escaped earlier, she goes through her own tragic past. After her mother died due to an illness, her father gave up to alcohol, becoming alcoholic, deserting his daughter. That's when a monstrous entity rushes towards the girl, having the option to shoot it down or spare it with the gun she was handed to by the mine owner's son. After shooting the monster, it's revealed that it was her father rushing towards her, which ends the story with the girl crying in remorse. If the girl decides to spare the monster, her father hugs her while having tears rolling down his eyes, displaying how much pain he is in. The end screen then displays figures of human trafficking victims and how they are exploited in different vicious manners, acting as an effort to raise awareness, a problem that is too real, with the most of the victims not able to escape and tell their tragic stories. According to the scattered notes, it's possible the gang members were the mine workers who were treated horribly by the mine owner and not paid for several months. Their eyes were hollowed out, with their faces becoming more and more deformed as the girl went deeper in the mine. This portrays how the men lost their sense of conscience and empathy after being treated so horribly and suffering from the harsh world. They became like wild animals and morphed into monsters, acting purely based on their survival and wild instincts, not able to see and sense the pain and suffering they cause on children with fragile and innocent minds. At the end, witnessing so much cruelty and inhumanity, the girl just like the mine workers becomes hollow, with her eyes pulled out, going into the same hell human trafficking gang members lived in in their minds. She witnesses her own tragic past, her mother dying and her father becoming alcoholic as the result, deserting his daughter. She even sees her own father in a demonic form. She has the chance of forgiving her father or shooting him down, with the latter ending up with her bursting into tears. But when she decides to forgive him, he apologetically embraces her, happy to have found her, making sure that he's going to take care of her and have a brighter future, understanding how horrible it would be without her. This causes the girl to also regain her eyes and believe in a better future, then becoming hollow and unsympathetic with her world coming back to normal. If you enjoyed this video, you can stay tuned for more by hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell. It's been your host, Star, and I will see you next time.